Hello, everyone. Welcome on into ClayshareCon 2024, day two, and our second session of the day. And we have Kathy Skaggs joining us from Amico. She's coming back with us. She was with us last night for our private evening where we learned how to make jelly plates, which I have ordered all the supplies. I even bought a new baking pan so that I don't have to take the one from the house to make my giant 11 by 17 jelly plate. Um, so if you didn't watch that, we'll go back and watch the replay of that. It was amazing. I'm pretty sure Amazon, Walmart, everybody's gonna sell out of gelatin, gl glycerin, and 91% rubbing alcohol. Well, yeah. I know, but today we're going to focus on making mono prints with those jelly plates on bisqueware. So let's go down to Kathy and see how she's doing this morning and what she's got to share with us today. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Jessica. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. So to, yesterday we did, we made jelly plates and I walked you through how to do it. And if you missed it, or if you need a review, I did put a YouTube up about how to make it. And you can always message me through Instagram. I think it's Kathy Skaggs Clay. Um, I'll double check that. But if you search my name, you'll see my little picture and you can message me if you have any questions. Um, I'm always looking for content and I will be adding a lot more to my YouTube. I've tried to get it uh, on there because I noticed a lot of people go to that for information like I do. So I will be posting also more mono print uh, using the jelly plates the next week or two. So don't get frantic. What's beautiful about this situation is you can always go back and refer to it, but we'll catch you up. There's a lot to do with it. So we're going to just show you a little bit to get you started. And then um, because there's so many things you can do. So I'm going to show you how to print. I'm going to show you how I print on bisqueware. I'm going to show you how I print on moist clay and how I do transfer prints. So it's going to be a lot, but stay with me and uh, ask a lot of questions. And um, I know you will really enjoy doing it yourself. So I'm going to screen share and I bring up a little presentation that I worked on this morning for you that I thought would kind of get you uh, up to speed. Let me just uh, go up here. So this is going to be, hang on. Let's see my little play thing. Uh, this is going to be kind of give you an overview. And then what I'm going to do after I do this is I'm going to show you a few things about doing the printing. We'll get as far as we can. Uh, like I said, it's, sometimes it's a lot of information, but uh, uh, that's okay. They can go back. That's why you can re-watch it. That's why we have that's the replay. That's right. So you can that's watch it right. over and over. So a lot of people ask me about making the inks. It's so ridiculously simple. It's just crazy simple. All you do is pour velvet underglazes into a pie pan, let it set out until it gets thick like that, and transfer it into a jar. You don't have to add anything to it. A 16-ounce pint makes 8 ounces of printing ink. That's all you have to do. Trust me, I tried adding stuff you don't need to. Then I put it in a jar. If it gets too thick, I use gum solution, which Amico sells. You mix it with water. The instructions are on the label. And that's what I use to make it more liquid if it gets too dry. And the more I use of this, the better this ink gets. So I asked the ceramic engineer at Amico. I said, gee, I, you know, I'm using this. Sometimes I let it get too dry on purpose. And then I add the gum solution, and he said it's because the water evaporates out, but the gum solution stays. And it should be the consistency of face cream. Okay, I'm going to skip through that because that wasn't supposed to be on there. So you can add that gum solution to your underglazes, your glazes, anything that is too thick that you need to thin down. So it really is a good thing to have in your studio. And trust me, I didn't do it for a long time. And then I was like, I would just add water and it, it's not nearly as good. Okay, so this is basically how I do the mono prints. And this is gonna be mono prints on bisque, and then I'm gonna show it to you on a cup. 
This is a commercial printing plate. I've got my underglaze ink and I'm putting one drop of Dawn dish soap. Dawn dish soap. Dawn, blue Dawn. Because it is going to help the underglaze ink stick to the jelly plate and stick to the items that I'm going to press into the jelly plate. Because there's no additive in the underglaze ink, it will beat up otherwise. So it's important that you uh, add that and just one drop, little bit. You can see this is what it should look like. See that texture? No big long streaks. It should be very opaque, so you can't see through it. And it might take you a couple of times of doing it. So now I'm going to press objects in. And this is why you use a jelly plate, because it has a spongy surface. And you take your objects and you just press them firmly into your jelly plate. Because you've added a drop of the dish soap, it'll cling also to those objects. So we're going to press Legos. We had the grid that was from a seat roof ceiling. Uh, cardboard is one of my favorites. I love those lines. So simple. Rolls of tape. Anything that you have, tools work good, anything that you have around your studio. Now I'm going to put the bis tile on the jelly plate, not the opposite. I'm going to slide it off the table and flip it. And oh, 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 oh <laughs> my gosh, a little pony roller on the back. And I did leave the acrylic sheet on the back of the jelly plate um, when I do this. Uh, so now I'm just going to roll it because you want it to make contact with the bisque because it's not like a rubber stamp in paper. You want it to really contact it. Now, when you pull it off, oh my gosh, it is beautiful. Then you would bisque it. And then I use, we'll talk a little bit about glazes in a minute, but I use Celadon glazes if I'm doing cone six and I use TPL glazes, which is a low fire translucent if I'm doing low fire. Sometimes this is another thing that I do is I try to find materials that I can create a little texture with. I do work flat on slabs and I'll tell, talk to you a little bit about that as we go along. But all I'm basically doing is the same thing. I'm inking it up with this turquoise, one of my favorites. I'm going to take this bubble wrap, press it on my jelly plate, roll it with the pony roller and take that texture and move it over to my slab of clay. I I do all my surface decoration flat, and then I build with wet slabs. We won't get into that today, unfortunately, but I'll post something later about it. So I really like this. Instead of working um, like I used to do, where I'd make a pot, fire the pot, get the pot out of the kiln, and go, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with it now? Now I work from the surface to the form. So sometimes I'll do things like this, but it's a rough surface now. So I have to take the plastic wrap, put it on there and use the pony roller to go back over so that it's smooth because everywhere that you print has to be smooth. So if you want this little bit of texture, you'll see I'm going to print on top of that. I do use baby wipes a lot to clean my uh, jelly plates. And they print better sometimes if you clean uh, every now and then after them, especially the homemade ones. And we'll talk about kind of the difference in a minute. Um, but the baby wipes, it's something I learned off of YouTube, just watching people that do jelly plates. And it's pretty handy to do. So sometimes I, I do texture. Uh, I do what we did on the bisque. Now I'm going to do a transfer because sometimes I want to, I can't print on the jelly plate and then just flip it over and like a stamp, put it on the clay because it kind of wants to slide around. So this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take my black. I use a lot of black, love black. It's the jet black velvet underglaze, one drop of the Dawn dish soap, and I'm going to use the brayer and roll it on there. So this is going to be a kind of what I call an indirect print or a transfer print. So we're going to roll the ink on there. Then we're going to do just like we did before. We're going to press our objects into our printing plate. Again, any kind of textured objects. In a minute, I'm going to show you some stamps that I bought on Amazon that are like, man, they are printing great. 
Uh, but these are just kind of found. Sometimes I like to just use found objects. Now, you'll notice that part of that printed in the upper right hand corner, I'm thinking, hmm, that might be another good idea right there. So we're going to do the same thing. But this time, we're going to take a piece of tissue from the Dollar Tree. And I use cheap tissue. I'm all about common materials. And I'm going to put it shiny side down. Why? Because I want it to not absorb the ink. I want it to pick it up and put it back down. So don't worry about laying your tissue paper on there. Just lay it and let it go. If it wrinkles a little bit, do not worry about it. We're going to pony roll it so that we'll pick up all the ink and then watch for such a cheap tissue. When I pull the print, look at how much pulls up on that tissue paper. It's like beautiful. I've tried expensive tissue paper, doesn't work as well. So we're gonna put it down, but it is cheap and it is thin, so you can't rub it. So you need to take it and take your pony roller now and do it. Now I'm working on a moist, slab. I just roll the slabs. I keep them moist between pieces of plastic. And I'll show you why. I'll do a little quick how I build it video. But now you can see that the ink, it's a one-time thing. You don't use it again, but you can see that that ink now has transferred to your clay. So you could kind of collage different things together. This is, I always use my slabs wet. And I always encase them in plastic. So what I do is this way I can kind of build with them later. And this is one of my favorite pottery tools, my pair of scissors. And because I've encased it in clay, I can just come in here and just cut my slab out. And people go, what do you do with your extra pieces that are printed on? You can do one of two things. You can either one, you can... Uh, wipe it off with a damp sponge and reuse the clay again because the clay is so soft. Or number two, I overlap them sometimes and put a piece of plastic and roll it with a slab roller or a rolling pin, I think because I've been quilting a lot, and kind of piece it together. I love these chinette plates. You'll notice I took the plastic off the back. Now that I'm done, I can take the plastic off the front and just pop it down because the slab is very wet. Now, this is what it looks like after I glazed it with the, I glazed it with the teacher's palette light. It's a low fire version of Celadon. And this is uh, the teacher's palette light with one coat on the right and the clear glaze on the left. I like using a colored glaze, a uh, kind of a sheer, like a Celadon. If you're doing cone six, I love the celadon glazes and um, that way you get a little bit of color where you've printed all right so let's stop sharing this and let's go to uh let me show you some things that i have on my table but before i do that jess do you have any questions for me yet so there's a folks asking can you use newsprint paper for the transfer instead of the tissue paper well, you know, that's a good question because look here, I have newsprint and I'm going to show you how I use that. <laughs> it does not work the same as the tissue. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that. So and, and then along I, the paper, they ask, could you use rice paper? Could you make the prints and save them for later? Let them dry and use them later? Yes. So these are these I printed earlier and I printed these on newsprint. You can use rice paper. I've used rice paper. I've used pattern paper for sewing. I've used tracing paper. I've used tissue paper. I've used newsprint paper. And the newsprint that I prefer, let's see if I have a tablet of it, is this. It's Strathmore Newsprint 300 series. It's a rough newsprint and a hardy newsprint. I have tried like big sheets of packing newsprint from Home Depot but they don't seem to be rugged enough. So what I usually do, I don't always do the tissue paper transfers. I'm going to show you how I do it with casting slip because that's, I can't. Yeah, that's the exact newsprint that I buy. You can get it everywhere. Right. It's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap and it's really hardy and good. Yes. So yes. before I actually pull a print, you know what? I forgot I had one more slide before I do this. I'm going to, Sorry about that. I'm going to go back to 
where I was. Hang on. Hopefully I didn't close it. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to address a question. Someone made a jelly plate and the half sheet pans they're using are used. Will the tiny scratches transfer? Well, your transfer, Amber and Michelle, is going to be on the top. So the bottom doesn't matter of those pans you're making your jelly plate with. The top will be nice and smooth like glass. It'll be beautiful. So there won't be scratches there. It'll be perfect. No. And let me get this up. And you keep talking. You keep, you're doing great. I got that. Let's see, um, under glaze right at the bottle. No, she mixes an ink, Lisa, and um, she does have. She did share it at the beginning. You probably missed it because I saw you join late. And uh, she does have a video on Kathy Skaggs um, YouTube. So we've shared that yesterday, and we've shared it a few more times. We'll we'll get that out there for everybody to to watch. Hang on, sorry. No, it's okay. I can't oh, answer I questions. We'll, we'll, Okay, I did. I skipped one uh, slide that was uh, one thing that filmed little video that was darn important. So let me show you that. We'll skip past this one. Okay. So this is how I print on bisque on cups. So this is, I've made this ink out of this blue green. It's one of my favorites. And this is on a commercial jelly plate. And this is basically how I print on cups and three-dimensional forms. So I put one drop of Dawn dish soap always because, again, the underglaze doesn't want to stick to the non-porous surface. So we're going to go in here, and I've just inked it up. And you want to make sure your inks are fairly moist. And then just roll it real even on there. I mix a lot of colors right on the printing plate. These are some wooden stamps that I found at a quilt show, but I also ordered some off of Amazon, and I am loving these wooden stamps. So I take these, I wipe them off as I use them. So I'll press them in, wipe them off, press them in, wipe them off because they'll get dirty and won't print that much. So you do want to kind of press them in. And um, so these wooden stamps have been like great. I mean, I love found objects too, but I really like the look of this. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, I have a, a bowl that I threw that I silk screened a flower on the inside. I've got two marks, one there and one there with pencil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll one side and then the other. So this has been bisque fired. So now I'm gonna line that line up and I'm gonna just roll it firmly and it's gonna pick up the print and I'm going to stop as best I can where that other line is. But sometimes I like it overlapped or if there's a gap, I don't really care, frankly. Now I'm going to move it up. And that's why I inked up that whole area. Now I'm going to put it down where that line is. And I'm going to do the other side. Look at those little birds. They're so cute. It's so cute. I love it. it. Oh, so cute. Oh, my gosh. Now, okay. And, and then I, I put a celadon my... glaze over it. So this is what it looks like at the end. So anything that's straight up will print directly from there. I do do silk screening onto the jelly plates and pick it up that way, but we're really not going to get into that. It's a little bit much for now. So a lot of times, like I said, I just mix the ink on there. You can see that that's darker in color because sometimes I'll put a little black, I'll put the darker colors to me print better than the yellows, the chartreuse, uh, even the reds. I, I tend, to, tend to stay with the blacks, the blues, the greens, and then I just kind of mix them on there until I get what I want. Velvet underglazes are beautiful when they're mixed. I think they're better mixed than straight out of the jar. I think you get a more complex look. So here we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to just take our little stamps and just stamp it all along on there. But like I said, don't be afraid to mix your underglaze colors because they kind of mix like paints. Like, you know, you can't do like yellow and, you know, closer on the color wheel works better. So, but darkening, lighten them. I also use a lot of white now. I used to never use white underglaze, but since it's very opaque, it works really good. So here's a cup. Then this only has to be a one-time thing. So I'm going to go in here and roll it and it'll just pick up all that ink. 
you could do it with a coil pot and just pick up the highest part of it, you know, whatever you want. So now all I have to do is bisque fire. It is darn beautiful, all right? So that's the blue green that I used. So again, all I do is I just mix it. I put a drop of dish soap on it. I'm gonna fast forward through this one since you've seen it. But uh, then that way, see, I'm getting a kind of a little different color. So I don't use the same color over and over again. I just add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, come in here, do a little stamping, wipe off my stamps in between, boom, boom, boom and then take my cup and just roll it. And then I put, uh, after I fire it, I put a, uh, I put, well, I don't fire it in between. I glaze them like now, uh, but I do use a lot of celadons over them because that's a mid-fire cone six light uh, clay body. Okay, now I'll switch over. I forgot the most important part of that little thing. Okay. <laughs> that was so great. Um, folks, um, want to know where you got your little stamps, especially the birdie one. Okay. O M G. <laughs> Look at those. Amazon. Your brother Jeff from Amazon. Jeff from Amazon. <laughs> okay. And I bought these at a quilt show. I think these I bought at Amazon. Look how cute those are. Oh my gosh. So cute. Jeffy would I love it. I, Jeffy loves clay share. I have to tell you. We love you. us some Jeff, don't we? We oh do. God. We love, we, we, apparently I do. Um, I need to, we have a clay share shop. I need to add them to the clay share shop. I'm going to make a note. Good idea. So, folks, if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash clay share, we already have a bunch of pottery tools and supplies set up for you. Makes it easy so you can find things. And I try to add stuff when demos happen for you. So I will, um, I will get stamps added to the shop. And if you can't find it, if you email me or, you know, let me know. Thank you, Kathy. Me. Yeah. Okay. Let me grab one thing over here. So I'm in my studio in scenic Mayport, Florida, right outside of Jacksonville, Florida. So, and this is where I stay all the time. So this is what I did this morning. I got up. Wait, and, I just had a moment, Kathy. Could you yes. take a wooden rolling pin and roll it across the jelly plate? Yes. And it would make a print. You got Girl, it. I'm sorry. My brain just melted. Combination. I just, I got to come see you. And we have I to have some so. time together. We, we need to do so. that. We should we talk. need to do okay, some um, combo little. We do. Something, something. We, well, let's talk it in Sika, you and me. Okay. We'll have to. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Back on. I'm sorry. I just so, had a moment. No, that's fine. I love that. <laughs> this morning, I got up early and I printed these on newsprint. Since you ask about newsprint, let's talk about newsprint. All right. Because there's so much color and in ink, you know, you have to remember you've extracted a lot of the water out of the underglaze. So it's kind of heavy coating on there. So I can't always just turn this upside down on the clay and wet it from the back and have it transfer. I've had people in workshops try it with mixed results. I don't think it looks so good. So I watched a lot of Jason Burnett videos when he was transferring onto clay with slip. So I got the formula, I added, I put it all together. But what I found was it took too long to dry. So what I do now is I print on newsprint. So I printed this this morning. Notice those little cute little birds. Uh, this is one that I did with an underglaze applicator. I, I just start printing on newsprint. Just print, print, print. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it, nor do I care. So this is silk screened. Uh, this one was silk screened and this one is a jelly print because I like mixing the patterns. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to put some um, um, casting slip on here. So any mid-fire casting slip will work. Why do you want to use a casting slip? A casting slip uh, doesn't have much water. And because it doesn't, um, it will dry quickly. So it will dry and be ready to, I'm going to take this, cover it, and then transfer it onto my clay slab. But um, it'll take maybe 10, 15 minutes for this to dry up. 
Whereas if I use regular slip, it'll take 45 minutes. Will it work? Yes. Will it take you a long time? Yes. So since I'm a woman that is very impatient, I really like this casting slip. The other thing that you can do, because velvet underglazes are so power packed with color, you can actually color your casting slip with velvet underglazes. So sometimes I'll pour a little bit in. If I want a blue background instead of a white background, I'll just add some underglazes into my slip. I use casting slip if I have a white colored clay, um, excuse me, a red colored clay, and I want a white surface because the glazes look better, I'll just paint a layer of casting slip on it. Kathy, I'm sorry, I missed whose casting slip do you use? Any. 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 Just whatever cone they, you're firing to. If any. You're, you know, get I, the I, there's one. two okay. kinds that you'll get. I don't really pay attention to the temperature too much. This is a cone six, and I do fire at mid-range. Um, but the reason I use cone six, sometimes even when I do low fire, is notice the color is white. If you use low fire casting slip, it is gray because it's predominantly ball clay and it's really, really gray. So when you do the transfers, the colors like, you're like, what? You can't quite tell what you're gonna get. And so because of that, um, there's just a color change. And then once it's fired, it's blaring white and it does work, but you have to in your head go, that's gonna be white. Whereas if I use this, I have a better color reference. So we're gonna set these to the side. I'm gonna bring back my jelly plate and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the jelly plates. Once these set up, it'll just take a few minutes. Hopefully we'll beat the clock by 1045, which I think we will. Uh, we're gonna transfer those onto a clay slab. So let me move this out of the way. Okay, so this is my commercial jelly plate. And I buy them in all different sizes because I'm like addicted to this. This is the jelly plate that I made that we talked about yesterday and that you can go back and find the information on. So this is, this is the difference in these. And I don't have long enough to really, I'm gonna demonstrate some, but I just wanna verbalize it to you. So the jelly plate that you make is a little more porous than the jelly plate you buy. This is, I don't know what, it's proprietary, they don't tell me, but it's a plastic, it's just a spongy plastic. Because it's a spongy plastic, whenever I put in inks, there's no absorption. So if the inks are a little dry, it works, if the inks, you know, that's fine. But if you, when you go to make, if you get excited about making your jelly plates and you make them, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, when I, I poured this into a cookie sheet, all right, and this is the face that was on the side of the cookie sheet. This is where I want to print. How do I know that? Because I got up way early this morning to get ready for my presentation and I inked up this side and the inks totally just abs almost absorbed into it. So I had to really wet down my inks and stuff. I found that I didn't think it mattered and probably as it ages, it doesn't matter because this is the one that I showed last night. This is one that I had from quite a while ago and it's really, really hard and firm. I think as they sit out, they cure and get better. As you use them, they get better. So my hint to you is this, trust me, because I did it this morning. This this is the side that was toward the cookie sheet. You want to ink that up. And okay, use that. so not the, not the side that's right. open when you're making it. Have okay, your so inks, have your you inks a little that. bit moist. So my inks look like this, all right? And they even this might be a little bit thick. So I might even do something like um, that and make this a little more liquid. But if you make it too liquid, you don't get a good print. But what I have found is that the longer these age and the more you print on them, the better they get. So if you pull your first print and a lot of the ink is wanting to stick to the plate, Go to the sink, wash it off or scrape it off. No, no, you know, not hard scrape it off, remove it. 
and then ink it up again with a little bit more moist ink. And maybe every time you pull a print, wipe it off. But after it cures and after you use it for a while, it will print better and better. It's not a little pretty that too dramatic, but dramatic enough that you may want to be emailing me and saying, why aren't they working the same? Because they're not the same. This is going to be a little bit more of uh, more um, uh, absorbent. It'll give you more of a vintage look. What's that? Yeah. Will it give you more of a vintage look if it's more absorbent and all the ink doesn't transfer the same? Yeah. So you have, you know, with printmaking, it's a little bit catch as catch can. So let's ink up this little plate because this one has been sitting out a while and I know it's pretty cured pretty well. And I'll just show you how it, I'll just pull a quick print with this. So you just put on your colors. And again, I just mix them if I want to. I'm going to take a brayer. I do add the drop of Dawn dish soap. Why? Because this has no additive. And I didn't think that mattered. So I added um, silkscreen medium, block printing medium, gelatin from the grocery store. I thought this can't be like this. But what I found is um, that you really don't need anything in there. You know what? I'm going to change my mind right here on TV. <laughs> Bloop. Right here with the world watching. Because, you know, this is how it really is. Make sure I'm on the screen here. Since I know a lot of you guys throw and maybe don't do flat slabs like I do now. All right now, so we're going to get this coated and I'm going to bring it up to the camera. That's what you want to see. It's just got a little bit of texture, you know, and you're like, well, OK, I get this. But, you know, getting the right amount of ink sometimes can be tricky and the ink has to be pretty moist. Let's uh, let's go in here with a little bit of something, something. Any other questions while I'm rolling? Yeah, we have one. Could you just add the soap to the jar? You know, I've tried that with mixed results, but I certainly would try it. But I don't always, you know, I'm sometimes I'm silk screen with it. Some, I don't always jelly print with it. So that's why I add it, you know, as I go. I'm just going to do something with these leaves. And then we'll check our slabs. Maybe we can knock those out before you, before we have to part ways. And remember, if you just go to YouTube under my name, Kathy Skaggs, KK, Kathy with a K, Skaggs with a K, um, I'll put all this on there eventually. I'm working on it. Okay, so now we'll just take our cup. We hope this works on live TV, you know. <laughs> it's always a little daring. Okay. And I love that printed look. Okay. I love Let's that. Out of the way. Let's see if we can throw a couple of slabs on uh, our transfer just so you can see at least one. Try right, to go quickly. Yeah, that turn cupped out and turn that cup turned out so amazing. I'm like tongue tied by the process. I, love I know. It. Well, you know, you I thought about it a lot after we were on last night 
And I think what the message that I got is people were like, yeah, that's all great, but what are you going to do with it? You know, it was that kind of thing. So that's what I thought about. Oh I'm my gosh. That with my fingers because I'm in a rush. So. so I got into pottery through printmaking because I was taking printmaking oh, really? and, and I really loved wood carving. And I thought, how cool would it be to have a 3D form I could do wood carving on? So, but not wood, I wanted clay. So I started doing just really deep carving on thrown pots. And that's kind Ooh. of where it led to me where I am with this graffito and Mishima and all, you know, pr a printmaker at heart here. And so seeing this is just filling my soul with creativity and joy. And see, and I'm I loving this, Kathy. <laughs> but now, but now you're doing it. Yeah, but it's they amazing. So okay, so we're gonna let's do one of our mono prints so we can see that. Okay, so I've got this. I've with I put the slip on. So now I'm gonna just lay it face down, and I'm gonna take a rib, rub it. Oh, I think we're gonna be perfect on time. Hoo hoo hoo! So happy. It's a little things in life, you know? Yeah, I do. I love collaging uh, the different things together because I'm a woman that can't make up her mind. And what I found difficult about ceramics is like trying to figure out what I wanted to do on it. So this way I don't have to decide, decide until the end. And like I said, I do a lot of silk screening on clay, and I just posted a video, uh, thank YouTube thing about that. And the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing more on the mono prints. Okay, so we want to really scrub that down, moist slab, totally wet, because when I build, I build with it totally wet. Okay, so now let's pull, see if we can pull these off. I just want to make sure that they're down. Ooh. <laughs> so satisfying. And I so do good. teach workshops, so for any of you out there in the world. Okay, here's the one I printed. So now what I would do is cover it back with plastic, which is what I'm going to do right now. And then... I use this, uh, I use uh, this, you can see this is kind of colored plastic because I go to Home Depot and I get shrink wrap. This is the most important part though, right here. And I know we're almost out of time. I got to get my roller. We got five minutes. You can do it. Okay. This is the most important part. You have got to come back here and knock everything really flat. Make sure there aren't any air pockets because you put a layer of clay on another piece of clay. And if you have a little air pocket, that will show up. And if you have any little edges that are standing up, that's not good. So now... It's all nice and smooth and flat. Yeah, how are we doing on time? Four minutes. Okay, let's see how far we can get with this. The timer is started. We're going to do a two minute pot. Everybody wants to come to Florida and do a workshop with you, Kathy. Hey, that's fine. Or get, I'll, I'll come to you. Day long yeah. workshop. Let me know. Yeah. Let's do some printing. I'm going to cut a little more off of this for a reason that you'll see. 
Now, see, Not these pieces, I yep. so use those and seal them together. They're great. Go in here, little cut, little cut. Remove this, remove this. I'm not going to score, but pretend I did. We're going to overlap this. So it's just shrink wrap that you've applied to both sides. Yeah. Just like just saran any wrap or wrap. any yeah, thin any, plastic, any plastic wrap. Okay. Now I'm speeding through this because we're in a time crunch, but hey. Oop. Oop. Okay. So that would stay together and prop that up. Boom. Done. Okay. There we go, Jessica. Made a little bowl. Like Any a little other dish. Questions? Made a little dish. I love it. Uh, question was, do you do you bisque fire? When you're printing on the bisque ware, do you do a second bisque or you just glaze and fire? I just glaze and fire. I just glaze and, and fire. And Kathy, the workshops you do, are they through Amico or are they on your own? They're Amico. And so if you email, if you get in touch with me, is my contact information available for them? Yeah, Kevin will have it. So okay. those of you who are watching, uh, Kathy uh, works with Amico. And so yes. she'll do workshops for Amico and present for Amico at conferences and things. So Kathy's Amico. She's and Amico. if you and if you're <laughs> If you're at Inseca, I'll be at Inseca. If you're at the Amico NCA, booth, I'll be at I'll be NCA. stopping by. So come by I'll the be... booth and see me. That, we're all going to. That's where we're all going to want to hang out. All right, let's do it. I think we're dangerous friends. I think we could be in trouble, but that's the best kind of trouble. That is. That is. <laughs> we would make so many things. I can't even imagine what would happen. <laughs> All right, we have got a minute left. Anything uh, you want to share with everybody before we go? So tomorrow, we're going to talk about geometric shapes because geometric shapes are kind of hard to get onto pottery. So I'm going to do some more transfers similar to what I did. No mono printing, but as far as transfers, I'm going to show you that. I'll show you another way. I love GR pottery forms. I'm going to show you how I use those. Um, for some of my decorated slabs. So tomorrow we're going to make some slabs that have geometric shapes on them instead of organic shapes. And then we might even have time to make a little something, something with some GR pottery forms. Awesome. Well, thank you today for today, Kathy. I'm so inspired. You're welcome. I, I, You're welcome. I loved every minute of it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, You're so welcome. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Yay. All right. Wow. wow so many ideas in my head right now. I, I, I want to just go make stuff, but we're doing clay share con all day. So I'll be here. I just gonna, I, I took multiple pages of notes just now. So I hope you have your notebook because there's so many things. And of course, in a few minutes, this whole broadcast will be available for replay. So if you missed any of it, you can go back and watch it over and over and over. And you're going to need to because there's so much information. Some things might be brand new to you. That's okay. Just keep watching it. Kathy gave some great resources. You can look her up on YouTube and watch more of her videos and learn about this process. I do have make your own underglaze transfer classes on ClayShare. I got a couple of them, I think two or three where we use newsprint and we make mono prints. We don't use a jelly plate though. So this is a new thing to add it in. So you can check those classes out. So there's a lot of stuff out there and I can guarantee there's gonna be a lot more coming. Now, Kathy is gonna join us again tomorrow morning, as she mentioned at 10 a.m. Eastern again, and she's gonna do the geometric shapes. So that's gonna be a really fun one. Now we're gonna take a little break, just about 15 minutes. We'll be back on the hour with Jeff from GR Pottery Forms. So come back and join us then.